So basically today I'm going to talk about ethics and some other ethical principles that you should know as a student of philosophy. Yeah, so ethics is a branch of philosophy that talks about the morality of an action. It talks about the rightness and the wrongness of every action, right? You heard me say morality, right? Yes, you are right. Morality, because there is no way you can talk about ethics without talking about morality and there is no way you can talk about morality without talking about ethics. So, in this, we can say that morality is the basis of or the foundation of ethics, while ethics presupposes morality. Morality, when we talk about morality, we just mean that an action uh, or someone has a sense of what is right and what is wrong. Why ethics is that branch of philosophy that talks about morality itself. Yeah? So in the course of this study, there are four things I want you to have at the back of your mind. So whenever you hear me mention it, you will not be confused. You have to be in terms with these terms so you cannot be confused anytime you hear me say them. The first one I would like you to know is the word moral. That is from morality. When we say an action is moral, it means that an action that is commendable, an action that is praiseworthy, an action that is desirable, right? So if we say an action is moral, it means that, that action is praiseworthy, it means that that action has been recommended for others to act in that same way. So the first one I've mentioned is moral. The other one is immoral. This is a direct opposite of the other. When we talk about immoral, we mean an action that is that speak evil, an action that is bad, an action that is despicable, an action that is reprehensible, an action that is not desirable. So once someone acts immoral, automatically that action is said to be a very bad action. That is second. Then thirdly is non-moral. When we say an action is non-moral it means that that action is out of the realm of morality that is an action that is not acted by humans so we can say basically that these actions may be probably uh, acted by trees houses how i mean someone will be acting how can a house perform an action or how can trees perform an action very simple, maybe a building fall down and destroy people's life and property. This is an action. This is an act. When we say a tree fall down and destroy people's houses and people's lost their life in the process, this is also an act. So these actions that are performed by trees and other non-living things, these actions are called non moral because they are out of morality they are not performed by human beings because there is no way you can render judgment concerning this action there is no way you can render a valid judgment concerning this action because they are not acted by humans they are not acted by humans so trees houses and other non-living things whenever an action is being acted by this um, things we can say that such action are not moral. Then the last one I'll have to mention is amoral. Yes, amoral. When we say an action is amoral or someone acted in an amoral way, it means that that person is indifferent to what is right and what is wrong. Let's say, for example, a baby. A baby does not have a sense of morality because it is that baby is indifferent to right and wrong. When the baby um, puts his hand or her hand in a burning fire, that baby did not know what is going to happen to him or to her. So an action that is performed by a baby, such action is said to be amoral because they are indifferent. They don't know the consequences of their action. So they are indifferent to what is right they are indifferent to what is wrong so basically i've mentioned this four things that i need you to have it at the back of your mind say because i'm going to be mentioning them as we go on so whenever you hear you do know what this one implies and what this one so you don't miss them all right so having 
said all this, I want you to know that in talk, talking about ethics, we have um, approaches to um, ethics. So when we talk about normative ethics, we talk about the study and the prescription of the rules and regulations regarding the rightness and the wrongness of human actions. So this approach basically tells us or give us guidelines on what human beings should do and what they are not supposed to do. So another approach to ethics is one we call descriptive ethics, just like the name implies or just like the name is, it shows that this approach to ethics only gives us the description on what ethics is but does not actually give us or make any valid judgment on what human action should look like or what it should not. Just like saying for example you are admiring something or you are making a plan or you're describing how you want your life to be or how you want to live your life you start describing how you want it to be you end up after describing but you did you do not have what it takes to bring this description into reality so this is basically what descriptive approach to ethics is actually explaining because it gives you description but it did not make room for valid judgment on what this action should look like and what it shouldn't and the other one that is the last one is um, meta ethics meta ethics always talk about the clarification of ethical terms you just talk, it clarify ethical terms and that is it so when we talk about normative ethics this is where morality comes in because it has to do with human actions it has to do with how human beings behave how they act how they react to different issues how they react to one another in trying to grow up having a mutual um, understanding having a mutual growth and in trying to overcome what is good and in trying to overcome what is bad so normative ethics focus on morality why others um, do not actually focus on morality it's only describe what morality is but do not give the prescription or the valid judgment on how human beings should act and how they shouldn't act so other normative ethics we have what is called um, egoism we have the consequential theory that is in this we have entered what is called the principle of ethics or ethical principles so we have egoism we have uh, consequentialism so it is from consequentialism that we have um, utilitarianism and egoism so when we talk about egoism this theory states that human beings should act in a way that is best that is always in their favor that is you should act in a way that favors you that is every action of humans is selfish action right so there are two types of egoism you have ethical egoism and psychological egoism psychological egoism says that there is no way any action that you perform you cannot say that that action is void of selfishness that every human action is motivated by selfish reasons ethical psychologists believe that there is no action that is not motivated by selfishness that any action that is not motivated by selfishness is impossible so the other aspect of egoism which is ethical egoism state that human beings should always act in a way that it is to their own favor that we should act in a way that it favors us act in that way that we know it is favors that is what ethical egoists say so another ethical terms or ethical principle that you need to know as a philosophy student or in the course of ethics lecture is what we call utilitarianism utilitarianism is an ethical principle that advocates for the greatest happiness for the greatest number of persons so the utilitarian belief that any action that do not give happiness to the greater number of persons 
should be abolished. So, utilitarianism is a principle or ethical principle or doctrine that advocates that for an action to be right, it needs to promote the greatest happiness to the greatest number of persons. So, any action that um, do not promote the happiness of the greatest number of persons, that action is wrong. Any action that promotes happiness to the smaller group of people while the large group of people remain unhappy, that action is not right. That action is wrong. So there are other ethical principles like hedonism, stoicism, that is from right on the ancient Greek. What about the uh, categorical imperative of Immanuel that states that that we should always act in a way that that action can be universalized. So any action that you know that cannot be universalized, that action should be avoided. So categorical imperative of the Kant as an ethical principle or as an ethical theory advocates that we should act according to that maxim that action should be universalized. So another ethical principle is what we call primary facial duty of Williams. David Ruth and the Manson principle. So basically, these are the basic things that we need to understand when we talk about ethics. Ethics is a very broad discipline or a very broad course. It's a branch of philosophy. It talks about how human beings should act and it talks about the actions that should be commendable in a society the action that one needs to a society needs to encourage and the one the society needs to abandon but nowadays in the society we see that people act in different ways they are acting opposite like they are not acting the way they are supposed to act but they are act the way they want you know so there is a difference between how human being acts and how human being ought to act Human art is just the way humans behave, that is out of impulses or whether consciously or consciously they just choose to act that way without having or even with their right senses they have a sense of morality but they just decide to act that way. But we have the art that is ought, when we say ought, it means by all means you are ought to act that way, how human being ought to act that is following the principle of ethics but nowadays in the society people ask the way they feel it is better and they get away with it that is morality is declining in our society there is no sense of morality there is no sense of belong because people feel that they can act the way they want and get away with it and that is what is happening in our present day society so people need to wake up and know what they are supposed to do as a good citizen of a particular country or a particular society. I can remember back in those days, of, although I was not present then, but I was told and I believe it is true. Yes, of course, it is true. You will keep your market and you will go to wherever you want to go. The only person that wants to buy from you, even if the person sees that you were not there to show you the level of morality in those days, the person will buy and keep the money and maybe probably you went to the market or you went to the farm you will come back and you meet your goods in pass and even if someone buys from you you will see the money there so what happened those days what is happening now these things can also be revived in our society if everybody decides to have a sense of morality if everybody wants to act in the way he or she wants there is no way society can be better Instead of inclining in morality, you will be declining day by day. You will see somebody that you are supposed to act right because you feel that other people are doing it and they are getting away with it, you just want to do it. So basically, we have talked about ethics, we have talked about the four ethical terms, we talk about ethical theories and some ethical principles that you have to, that one needs to be conversant with as a student of philosophy or someone who is doing ethics. So, if you find this video interesting and if you find this video on understanding if you find it educating if you find it awesome <laughs> i want to hit on the subscribe button i want you to hit on the notification bell so you can get every 
up my initial videos anytime I post them. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video.